Hello everyone, welcome back to Rotor Dynamics 101. In this video, we'll break down the essential API and ISO specifications that guide the design and analysis of rotating machinery. In this video, we'll also explore the undamped critical speed map, a fundamental tool in Rotor Dynamic analysis. So let's begin. API or American Petroleum Institute sets the standard for rotating equipment used in refineries and heavy industry. Think of compressors, turbines, pumps, and gearboxes. These standards define the minimum mechanical acceptance criteria for new rotating machinery. Their purpose is to provide reasonable assurance that, assuming proper installation and operation, the equipment will perform reliably throughout its intended service life. While the standards often follow a checkbox approach, applying them effectively still requires sound engineering judgment. Inside each API spec, there's a special section dedicated to dynamics. That's where standard paragraph 6.8 comes in. API standard paragraphs Section 6.8 is the core of the rotor dynamics and rotor balancing acceptance guide within the API standards framework for rotating equipment. But to really get the story, we should look into API Technical Report 684. API Technical Report 684 is a tutorial that describes, discusses, and clarifies these API standard paragraphs 6.8. The technical report 684 is a 538 page long tutorial written by the best in the business, filled with insights on critical speed and imbalance response and stability. Note that the dynamic task force consists of approximately 25 engineers from OEMs, end users, and consultants met between 2009 and 2011. As a group, they reviewed much of the content line by line, clarifying numerous items in the standard paragraphs. But some discussions tend to focus heavily on issues relevant to centrifugal compressors. The API spec requires undamped critical speed maps and mode shapes. Usually the first four modes across a wide stiffness range. These are to be analyzed over a wide range of bearing stiffnesses, typically from low to high, such as 0.1 to 10 times nominal stiffness, to show how rotor dynamics are sensitive to bearing support stiffness changes. Please note that the nominal bearing stiffness refers to the expected stiffness value of the bearing as installed and operating under normal or nominal design conditions, such as speed, load, bearing oil supply pressure, and bearing oil temperature. It's essentially a baseline value used for parametric studies. Mode shapes are also required to determine whether a mode is primarily bending or rigid body and how the shaft vibrates. Let's say you analyze a tilting pad bearing on a 3,600 RPM compressor shaft, and based on your bearing design and operating conditions, you compute nominal bearing stiffness, KXX and KYY. This is your nominal stiffness because it is calculated at nominal design point, such as load, speed, temperature, and oil viscosity. For undamped critical speed map, API 684 suggests swipping the stiffness across the wide range, for example, 0.1 times the nominal stiffness and up to 10 times the nominal stiffness. So even though stiffness isn't fixed in real life, the nominal value gives you an anchor to explore variability in system dynamics. So what is undamped critical speed map? 
As the name suggests, this map shows the critical speed of a rotor without considering damping. It gives us a lot of insight, but it's not the full story. Think of it as a roadmap, which is helpful for direction. The undamped critical speed map illustrates the rotor's natural frequencies. That's why it's sometimes referred to as the undamped natural frequency map. Shown here is the undamped critical speed map for a centrifugal compressor. Now, if you look at the graph, the x-axis is the bearing support stiffness, the y-axis is the critical speed, and both axes are on log scale. This map helps us understand how the rotor behaves as the support stiffness changes. For example, it gives us a rough idea of where the critical speeds are and how sensitive they are to changes in support stiffness. It also tells us what kind of mode shapes to expect, which is really important when trying to predict vibration behavior. So here's the key point. When the bearing stiffness is low, the rotor moves more like a rigid body. As the stiffness increases, the rotor starts to show bending modes. Let's break that down with mode shapes. At low stiffness, we see two main rigid body modes. The first mode is called cylindrical mode, or sometimes it is called bounce mode. In this mode shape, the motion at the both end of the shaft is in phase, meaning they move up and down together. The second mode is called conical mode, or the rocking mode. In this case, the ends of the shaft move out of phase, which means one goes up while the other goes down. If your bearing stiffness is anywhere from small up to around 10 to the 7th newtons per meter, in this case, these two rigid body modes show up as a straight lines on the map. Now let's talk about the bending modes. The third and the fourth critical speeds. These show up at higher frequencies and are less affected by bearing stiffness. For this example shown here, if you crank up the stiffness to around 10 to the 10th Newton per meter, even the first critical speed starts to look like a bending mode. Let's put this into context with the real example. Say you're working with a compressor that has a maximum continuous operating speed of 10,000 RPM and your bearing support stiffness is around 10 to the 7th Newton per meter. As this machine spins up from 0 to 10,000 RPM, you will pass through three critical speeds. The first one is around 2,000 RPM. The second one is around 5,000 RPM. And the third one is around 9,200 RPM. Each of these corresponds to a different mode shape. The important thing to note here is that if your third critical speed is close to your operating speed, you will likely get a high vibration amplitude near that point. And that's not ideal. You generally want to avoid running right at the critical speed. Please note that the term critical speed can vary in meaning depending on the context and source. Depending on who you ask or what source you are reading, the definition can vary quite a bit. Here are a few examples. First, according to John Vance, critical speed is simply the speed at which the rotor's response to imbalance or synchronous whirl is at its maximum. Second, in API 617, it is defined as the speed where a harmonic component of a forcing function matches or nearly matches 
one of any mode of the rotor vibration. When that happens, resonance can occur and that speed is called a critical speed. Third, Wilson's textbook puts it a bit more practically. It says a critical speed is when the vibration becomes significant enough to impact the machine's performance or lifespan. So it's less about theory and more about real-world consequences. And finally, Dara Childs takes a more mathematical approach. He defines critical speed as the running speed that aligns with the imaginary part of the system's eigenvalue, which ties directly into modal analysis. As you can see, each definition captures a different aspect. Some are more physical, some more mathematical, and others more focused on real-world behavior. All right, one last thing about damping. What we have been looking at is an undamped critical speed map. That means it does not account for the effect of damping. But in real machine, damping, especially from the bearing, can make a big difference. If there is enough damping in the system, it helps to reduce how much the rotor vibrates as it passes through those critical speeds. So bottom line is that damping is your friend. It plays a key role in helping the rotor get through those tricky speed ranges without running into trouble. We'll dive deeper into a damped imbalance response in the next video. Here is a summary of this video. When it comes to rotor dynamics in process machinery, the API standards are incredibly detailed. They are designed to improve reliability and give engineers a solid starting point. But here's the thing, while the specs are helpful, they're not a substitute for sound engineering judgment. Real world problem often need more than just ticking boxes. That's where API Technical Report 684 comes in. It's a companion to the main standard and it goes beyond the checklist. It walks through many of the key rotor dynamic issues you will face and provides practical insights based on experience. If you are serious about designing or evaluating rotating equipment, Technical Report 684 is worth digging into. All right, that's all for today. If you find this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out other videos on Rotor Dynamics. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.